it all on the track down. You know, Kato, when you started out, like, were you just like sending beats like via email or posting them on MySpace or? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of just doing a little bit of everything. Um, you know, MySpace was popping back then. So actually, when I started out, I started out like as an as a rapper myself. So I was making my own beats and rapping over well, we that. You know why that didn't last? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I figured after a while, I, I had to stop rapping and just stick to producing. Um, it's just hard to do both. I mean, bottom line, but, um, you know, after I started taking the production more seriously, um, I, I just, I, I just kind of had like, I kept posting my stuff online, um, had a few different artists, like just hitting me up via email and on MySpace, um, asking me for beats and stuff like that. But it really wasn't until I met, um, Jaren just like doing, random shows in the Atlanta underground scene for like 15 people max, you know, that's, that's when we really started to build the catalog together. I mean, so, okay. So we've established that the ideal situation is try to lock in with an artist and build, build that relationship. But if you don't have that, you know, like I, like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, there's, there's just skepticism that's already built in, right? Like, from a from from a producer perspective, like if an artist is interested in your beat, you're probably thinking like, you know, e either you're gonna get gypped or the paperwork's not gonna be right, or you're already thinking negative things, right? And then, but I'll tell you on the artist side and being, you know, on the other side of, you know, somebody that has had to purchase beats from 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 producers, like I'm I'm. In my shoes, I'm like, okay, well, these cats, it, it's probably, a, it, if it's a producer that's not well known, like, I could be thinking, you know, th this person's going to try to overcharge me, like, this this producer doesn't typically get probably more than 50 bucks for a beat, but now he's telling me he wants a thousand, right? Like, <laughs> how, did, how did your beat just become a thousand and you've never sold a beat for a thousand before? So there's, so that's why it's always like it, there's skepticism on both sides, right? You know, but there's ways to to just protect yourself and just always make sure that the dialogue is professional. Um, you know, things could escalate very quick into some real petty bullshit. You know, but that's you know that's that's, that's how you sever a relationship real quick as long if it gets nasty. Because um, from our side, you know, unless unless my artist really wants to work with you, like there's a shitload of producers, right? Yeah. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot yeah. of competition for production. So there's a lot of there's a lot of you guys out there, a lot. Yeah, for sure. I mean, man, yeah, I would I would say I mean there there might even be more producers you just than artists you just don't know about them all because they're just sitting at home like making beats on their laptop but they're not really branding themselves or marketing themselves and really getting out there but yeah it, it is definitely important man like you know i think in the last few years producers have kind of come to the forefront a little bit more because we're almost you know we almost have to become like artists and brands ourselves just to get our music out there just to like st stand out from all the competition um you know, so it's it's not it's not like the traditional model of how producers were like producing records behind the scenes like they were in the 90s and even the early 2000s. I mean, it's changed a lot. Um, you know, not to say that you can't be one of those guys that just makes incredible beats and incredible music and not be able to have a career like I do know those guys as well. Um, who just kind of stay more behind the scenes, don't really work with any artists or associate themselves with any artists very closely. They just make really good beats, um, and whether they sell them online or kind of market them on the YouTube platform, um, these some of these guys are making a killing just doing that. So I think it really kind of depends on, on what your personal goals are as a producer and what you want to accomplish. Um, but, you know... I think in large part, a lot of these guys are kind of stuck on wanting to 
produce music for for artists and get placements and that kind of thing. So, sure so I got a, I got a question for you, Cato. If he's all cut off, do uh, yeah. do you pref do you prefer selling exclusive rights or do you prefer leasing out beats? Me personally, um, I, I prefer leasing, uh, just because monetarily, like it just makes more sense to do that. The typically the only times I'll, I'll sell exclusive rights is if the budget is like super super straight, or if it's an artist that I know I'm gonna collect publishing on the back end, then I'll let it go for exclusive rights. Any other time, I'm just gonna lease the track, I'll be honest. Yeah.